It came from beyond our solar system, a mysterious wanderer streaking through the cosmic dark. It went behind the sun, but now it has reappeared. The interstellar visitor has returned, but it's strangely glowing brighter. Pulsing with strange energy after its trip behind the sun, astronomers are baffled. What is this all about? Our next report telling you. It's a celestial enigma hurtling across the void. The interstellar comet 3I Atlas has reappeared, lighting up sensors across NASA's telescopes after vanishing behind the sun. When it emerged, scientists gasped. The object had grown ten times brighter, glowing with a shimmer that defies expectations. NASA and European observatories are tracking the comet's intense ultraviolet and X-ray flares, signs of water vapor and dust blasting into space. But here's the mystery. The rate of brightening was far too fast for a normal comet. It was as if 3I Atlas had been recharged by the sun itself. 3I Atlas's trajectory points beyond our solar neighborhood hurtling through space at mind-boggling speeds. But what causes its unexplained glow? Experts speculate the comet could harbor alien organic compounds or exotic materials unseen in solar system visitors before, a scientific jackpot for understanding our cosmic environment. This celestial intruder was first detected months ago catching global attention as one of the few interstellar objects ever captured in human instruments. Its revisit now offers rare chances to study the birth materials of other star systems and the mechanics of cometary physics. Scientists are racing to decode its spectrum before it fades again. What's clear? 3i Atlas didn't come from here. Its orbit cuts through the solar system at an impossible angle, proof it was born around another star, carrying chemical secrets from a distant world. For now, it glows, silent, cold and unearthly, a messenger from another sun, whispering across the endless dark. Your report beyond World is One. A major humanitarian crisis unfolding in Sudan where the RSF has seized the city of El Fasha in Darfur and what has followed is being described by medical groups and researchers as a quote-unquote genocide. Reports from Sudan's western Darfur region saying hundreds, possibly thousands have lost their lives in the brutal attacks carried out by the RSF. The group captured El Fasha, the Sudanese army's last stronghold in Darfur, after a siege that lasted nearly 17 months. The Sudan Doctors Network saying at least 1,500 people were killed in just three days as residents tried to flee the city. It called the attacks a deliberate campaign of killing and extermination. Grim videos from the city showing their bodies lying bloodied, motionless, both inside and outside a building, while armed gunmen patrol and film nearby. Aid groups saying... They have evidence, reportedly, of executions, house-to-house -house raids, assaults on civilians escaping the city, reportedly. The Sudanese government claiming the death toll in El Fasha has already crossed 2,000. Humanitarian organizations warning that the real number may be much higher. Red Cross said Sudan is quote-unquote facing one of the most dramatic conflicts of our time, quote-unquote. As you have heard, El Fasha, already the scene of catastrophic levels of human suffering, has descended into an even darker hell, with credible, credible reports of widespread executions after rapid support forces fighters entered the city. The RSF has been fighting Sudan's army since 2023. In that civil war that has already claimed tens of thousands of lives and displaced more than 12 million people from their homes, El Fasha's fall effectively hands the RSF control of nearly all of that food, a region still scarred by ethnic violence two decades ago. More than 10 years after the creation of South Sudan, the takeover raises concerns that Sudan could face another partition. 
Our next story is about a phrase. It's just about everywhere. And now it's dictionary.com's 2025 word of the year. You've perhaps guessed it right. It's the phrase that's gone viral. It's basically made up of two numbers, six, seven, not technically a word. Where did the phrase even come from? The trend reportedly tracing back to a rapper's 2024 track. It started making its way into TikTok videos. There was no looking back, leaving people confused in its wake. And there's no stopping it for now, it seems. It's been at the center of a lot of intrigue. Teenagers have been using it. Adults don't seem to understand what it means. You would have heard it, perhaps used it yourself, been curious about it and understood what it's all about. Or maybe you're still scratching your head over it. Well, you are not alone because it actually has no meaning as such. Even Dictionary.com reportedly said in a rather reassuring statement uh, that they are still trying to figure out exactly what it means. Some interpret it as so-so when paired with the juggling hands gesture. Merriam-Webster reportedly describes it as a nonsensical expression used especially by teens and tweens, quote-unquote. And according to Dictionary.com, the phrase holds cultural value because it connects those who use it. And that its annual pick reflects the language shaping everyday conversation. Searches for the phrase, by the way, have gone up exponentially. So there's been a lot of curiosity associated with it. There have been memes, videos, mixed emotions about the phrase itself. One thing, though, is clear. It's here to stay. And there is no running away from it, at least for now. America grinding to a halt, planes grounded, paychecks frozen, millions on the brink of hunger. The United States has entered its longest government shutdown in history and the blame storm is only raging straight towards the U.S. president. The chaos is spreading across a nation that's running out of time, money and patience. Empty cupboards, empty airports, empty wallets. Across America, desperation is turning into fury as the historic shutdown enters its fifth week, leaving millions without food aid and hundreds of thousands without a paycheck. 41 million Americans face the loss of SNAP food benefits, the nation's largest nutrition lifeline. States are scrambling to plug the gap, but food banks say supplies are drying up fast. And this is a, a big break, the SNAP, because when you go to grocery shopping now, it's high. If you got the SNAP, it doesn't matter how much they give you, but there will be covered juice, milk, eggs. Everything costs a lot of money now. For me, having food stamp because uh, our work is dipping on your income. So affecting me, of course, because grocery, it's kind of high now. Airports in Dallas, Washington, D.C., and Chicago are scenes of confusion. Flights delayed or canceled as exhausted air traffic controllers call in sick. The Federal Aviation Administration has warned of serious staffing shortfalls, grounding flights, and stretching safety systems to the limit. A new Washington Post poll shows most Americans now blame President Trump for the shutdown a political showdown triggered by a standoff over spending and border funding. I just want to say to any Democrat in the United States Senate, we are happy to talk about any policy issue. We're happy to talk about health care policy. We're happy to talk about tax policy. We're happy to talk about regulatory policy, but not at the point of a gun. For Republicans from the very beginning of this presidency, cruelty has been the point. And what has been driving their policy agenda is to make life better for the wealthy, the well-off, and the well-connected. That's what the one big ugly bill was all about. 
what should have been a festive weekend has instead become a reminder of how deeply politics can disrupt ordinary lives. As children in the U.S. prepare for Halloween festivities, many of their parents are counting dollars, not candy. This shutdown is not just a political crisis, it's a humanitarian disaster unfolding on U.S. soil. The country's political leadership faces a stark choice. Compromise now or watch communities struggle and economies falter. As the government remains shuttered, millions fight to survive in a winter darkened by hunger, halted flights and broken promises. Bureau Report, we on World is One. China, regarded as the world's factory, is running out of steam. The country's manufacturing activity has now contracted for seven straight months. It's a long time and the longest lump in nearly nine years. The data shows factory output dropped sharply in October with the official PMI falling to 49, signaling the biggest dip in six months. Just days before the Trump Xi trade truce was announced, but that breakthrough has done little to actually lift confidence, it seems. New orders fell the most since 2023, by the way, hit by trade barriers and the sluggish demand at home. Analysts call it a discouraging start to the final quarter, a discouraging start, a sign that policy support is still needed in a way. China's Statistics Bureau has blamed the decline on fewer working days and a complex global environment. But economists point to a familiar headwind here, tensions with the United States, to put it simply. Last month, President Trump, remember, threatened 100% tariffs on Chinese imports, escalating his trade crusade. The output index dropped below 50 for the first time since April, when Trump's so-called Liberation Day tariffs were first imposed. China's export orders also hit a new low. For manufacturers, meanwhile, the latest Trump-Xi trade breakthrough that reduced some tariffs may offer temporary relief. But weak domestic demand as well as uncertainty in relations between the two sides will continue to cloud the outlook. Now, China's services sector did see a slight uptick thanks to the eight-day national holiday. But exporters are saying they are no longer relying solely on the U.S. market and that they have learned their lesson from years of trade turmoil, a feeling familiar to even allies of the U.S. who have been on the receiving end of Trump's unfair trade war. Now, coming back to China, exports still account for about one-third of China's growth this year, helping it stay on track for around 5% annual expansion. But analysts are warning the final quarter could be China's slowest since the COVID-19 pandemic. The Chinese government has already rolled out a 1 trillion yuan stimulus package, including new funding for infrastructure and policy banks, and some expect more rate cuts and liquidity easing soon. Looking ahead, Beijing is double downing on tech as well as manufacturing, promising extraordinary measures to drive innovation and strengthen export controls in its next five-year plan. The question still is, can China reinvent itself fast enough to stay the world's factory, or has that era already started to fade? We will have to wait and watch for that answer.